Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it's just like her own place. Right? I know. She loves it. <laughs> and then uh, uh, Delisi knows that she's not her human. Right. So she gets her, he's, she's been waking her up earlier and earlier. Oh, and earlier. Oh. <laughs> she's playing her. Yeah, Lauren's dog sitting and house sitting for a friend of ours here in Orinoco. And so she's like, yeah, she can speak it. 5.45 and then 5.30 and then Laura's like, tell her sternly, go lay down. Because yeah, she wouldn't normally be up that early. Yet. No. We were just talking that if we ever go somewhere like as a family, we need to find some dog sitters. So <laughs> <laughs> she likes it. That she's had some friends over, sure. you know, yeah. and things, but they've made, they've made dinner together and well, hung out there. Fun with it then. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? And then uh, Heather's gone over sure. a couple times. Mm -hmm. Spent the night with her and all neat you know, together, and that's neat. Yeah, so she likes it. Yeah, yeah. But the early mornings are hard. She, but she she goes she'll get up and so walk to Lisi, then feed her, and then she goes back to bed. <laughs> She's on mute, but oh, camera's there, but there. Melissa, can you hear us? I got you. Can you hear, can you hear me? Why? Oh, hold on. You right click on her name and see. No, it's not on mute. Yeah, you don't have her on mute. She's on mute. She'll have to hold down the space bar unless she's on her phone. She's not a, she knows she is. Can you hear me now? Maybe mute all and then unmute them again. I don't know. What is that set up professional audio? I don't audience? know. I've never seen that before. Get out of there. Volume <laughs> or something. Oh, yeah, sir. And that would be you, that one that you just clicked on. Do this last time, you guys, with the controls. Oh, here we go. All right, now can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Thank you. Oh, hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> we just need some time to figure out why you. Well, it took me a hot minute to get the link too. I didn't realize it wasn't an actual link. It was like a copy paste deal. I finally did find it in the calendar. All right. Thank you for joining us. Carol is in Alabama. Um, closing up. Give me back Friday. Sure. All right. So we'll go ahead and um, do you think through edits since the email went out it's towards the bottom. That was just there was no succession succession planning and we'll talk about that uh, at the end and uh, there's a motion to end up second the motion mean all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. Pick a spot. Nope, pick a spot. Thank You're you. Jim today. <laughs> I'll be Jim. I'm parking by the door because I have to leave early. <laughs> That's right. Carol, right? Yeah. Carol, Carol is. Hello, I get a half hour. Early. I don't know why she's going to be at best. You need three. Huh? You need three. Far away. You have to go. No, right. Right. One for each day. <laughs> One for each day. I own a washing machine. You get sweaty. <laughs> okay. Two might work, but one won't. All right. Anyhow. Uh, uh, have a motion for the May 10th meeting and uh, meeting notes, which on your table. The motion on that. You, you, you no, it. no, that was to approve the agenda. I'll motion oh. to approve the May the May motion agenda. May minutes. Yeah. Second, Lizzie. Yeah. We never. Anna. 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 
Yes. <laughs> Did we second it? Um, All in favor of the May 10th meeting minutes, I guess I'll saying aye. 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 Treasurer's report. All right, the treasurer's report. We've gotten quite a few deposits in since last month, so that's good. We have a check register balance of $36,031.60. Um, the 5K, we never really transferred any things back in there uh, when we did the $500. Deposits when I went and put our first deposit in, we got $235 from registrants. We're actually just keeping track of it. It's not a separate account or anything. We're just keeping track of it on a separate sheet. And so we actually have negative $124 in there right now because we I needed to catch up on the $500 payment and then the $235 coming in and we had $165. So we get $200 of sponsor money to put in there. So I don't think so there, but. 2410 negative. <laughs> so that's not, yep, that's not really mm -hmm. So, um, I put the yeah, I provided um, the email with that the has, on it. Um, should all be on your desk. Kind of a summary of the revenue and expenses for the last five years. I know a lot of people are new. And haven't gone over that since we didn't have a show last year. Um, I thought it would be good for everyone to kind of have an idea of how it comes into the show and how much money goes out for the different categories of expense. It's been fairly consistent in expenses over the years, and you can see our revenue has been declining. Mm -hmm. Melissa, can you hear me? I can hear you, yep. Can I, Melissa, can I mute you while you're, because there's like buzzing and stuff. Oh, just, just unmute when you're ready to talk. Okay. Here, I'll mute. I'll mute myself here. So our basic revenue is the collection of the lot fees um, and vendor food vendor payments, and then that second line is like miscellaneous ice and info booth. So when during the show we sell ice and. Um, sell t-shirts and sometimes there's a few donations so there's just kind of a random amount there that comes in that's not really related to the revenue uh, from the lot fees and then going through the expenses so it, the, there was quite a decline in 2019 didn't have any specific reason for other than just less bookings of, of lots and a lot of vendors retiring and changing plans there so um, hopefully, right now we're within a couple thousand dollars of the 2019 balance, and hopefully we can surpass that um, going forward. So we have more than 58,000 to work with. Um, even if that's what we had to work with, these are the expenses that again have been pretty consistent over the past five years, and we tried to decrease some of the expenses in different categories. Um, in administrative, the main expense in there is nine thousand dollars that is paid to Carol for the event coordination. She's paid three times per year um, for her efforts in coordinating the entire show. Um, there was less, and then there's some um, few other administrative items in there, and I can get the details of any of these categories that you want to look at. But advertising is something we've worked on to decrease over the years. Um, Carol's mentioned advertising in trade journals and newspapers and old billboards, all of that goes in there. Um, we're doing a lot more Facebook advertising, so hopefully we can keep that number low because that's an area where we have some opportunities. Uh, the 2019, we usually have an appreciation dinner. I think it was held in 2020, so that's why it's showing as blank there. I think it did occur. It's just the expense isn't technically. No, we, and, didn't, we didn't do one. We didn't do anything. Okay. Well, for 2019, we didn't do anything? Mm -hmm. Okay. It was all volunteer food, I think. Okay. So... That should be. No, I don't think we. I just don't yeah. think we did anything. Sorry. Or do we have like pizza? We had I just like we had that true barbecue stuff, Maybe but I don't know if that was the year before. But. We had pizza. Or pizza. Okay. Well, anyway, um, if it's Orinoco City permit, so this is um, a lot of the food vendor 
like two hundred dollars per each food vendor gets returned to the city of Orinoco for permitting and different things. So that's included in that line. Electric is all the electric poles when they're turned on for the food vendors. We have to pay for the electricity um, for those vendors. Golf carts for the show um, committee. Everyone has a golf cart in order to get around. So that's $1,400. The ice, we do recover some of that in our sales, but we have to pay for the ice. Um, there was quite an increase last year. I can't remember the details, but I think they just had a like increase in their cost to us. Um, insurance, we need to have a plan to cover cover the show, and that's been went up again last year and the year before. But that's a policy that we have to ensure the sh anything that happens during the show. Office supplies postage for mailing out contracts, um, radios. We have two-way radios for all the committee members to keep in touch with that um, to the info booth and around. The sheriff, we hire the sheriff for the weekend. This one, although it doesn't look like much of a decrease in the last five years, they were actually staffing it. We paid a lot more previous to prior to 2015. We reduced their hours. They were here a lot more hours. So, I don't know what their current bid is for this year, but that's for having on-site Homestead County Sheriff. Uh, show expense has some supplies in it. I'd have to look at all the details of that. Sometimes there's spray paint or tools or signage. Um, there's actually signs, a separate category of signs. We have to rent signs to put at each intersection to direct people. And then there was some banners included in that cost last year. Which was, you know, $500. Striping is paid to a company that comes out and marks all the lots and puts stripes down for each of those squares um, on a consistent expense. Telephone and internet is covering um, the monthly cost of having GovCom long distance. So let's our little porta potties around the show. And then web updates is some different things we've paid people for either hosting or what services to update the web page. So then we have donations at the bottom and then a payment that we make to Grace Lutheran for use of their parking lot in their um, areas. And that was a, a change that we made a couple years ago to try to decrease expense. Might be something to revisit again in the future if our revenues continue to be down. Um, so was there a line item for um, our operating expense that we keep from year to year? Um, you can add that sometime. Yeah. Yeah, basically, we try to keep 5000 in there at the end. So I have to have the running balance okay. from the beginning balance and then the revenue and expenses. And then we have 5000 at the end in November, which I think we want to increase based on conversations from last week. So, or last month. Okay. So, we have questions on any of those expenses. So, there's a lot of expenses that go into the show. So, it's important to kind of know. When people wonder what their hundred dollars mm -hmm. covers, it thank you for breaking covers, that down. Uh, a lot of the expenses. I thought that list was super helpful. Thank you very much for providing that. Um, uh, one thing. Uh, are we required to drive a golf cart, or can we save money if we have a side by side we can drive to town and use? So if you have your own side by side or golf cart, yeah, then. yeah. So you we could save money on. I would not need a golf cart, and I don't know if we ride in pairs or we ride separately. But I wouldn't need one, so that potentially could save some money. I guess I would not need a cart. Yeah, I don't know why you couldn't use your own cart. It's just uh, you should have a single seat. The golf clubs typically be in, or they're just flat areas. So yeah. But I can we can mention that to Carol to do one less golf cart. Yeah, that's yeah. if it's based on each golf cart, if they would, you know, give us a little bit of a break if we could cut a couple off. That would, we get right. I yeah, I don't know how they price it out or if it's that you just get six every year for the same price or how that works. I don't know. But if it saves money, uh I don't need to be counted in that list. Okay, we'll make a note of that and check with Carol. RJ golf cart. I don't know where they're 
out of. Um, Uh, Melissa, did you get a copy of this or I'll leave the others to you later tonight? Which form are we looking at right now? This is the spreadsheet we just went over. Yep, yep, I have it. Oh, you have it. Okay, it, it did go out. Thank you. Um, all right, we may, <laughs> this is going to be a, a, a good tool just to kind of talk about things as we go through, but thank you. All right, uh, any other comments for Melissa? The uh, social media update. Oh, first of all, does anybody have Kristen Rogers' contact information, email, phone numbers? I have all of that stuff. Is she not responding? Is that the issue? I have nothing to send. I don't have an email, either email or a phone number. Oh, I let me double check what I thought it was on that last list that Carol sent out. If it's not, I will email it to you tonight. And yeah, Melissa, I've messaged her quite a few times and never heard anything back. So I don't, I, I wonder if she's just not interested anymore. Uh, I don't think that's the case. I wonder if whatever we have on file is not correct. Okay. I can reach out to her and I will also provide additional contact info. I can follow up on that. Thank you. Thank you. Any updates on social media? Um, Facebook, website? No, I'm continuing to do what I do. Um, I, um, I just, I need more information about the car show, Corey, whenever you have time. I put something out there today, but yep. I only have the basics. So somebody asked if they can bring, if motorcycles count. We, we don't have a you know, we're on the grass. Uh, yeah, I figured probably no. Probably not a good idea. Yeah, I figured no, but I, I'll, I'll message back. Um, but, and you guys are kind of full up anyway, right? Like you don't. Well, I've got a good list here and I have 2019's list and give me a little more time to work on it. You know, it looks like if all the ones that want to come back or even 80% of them from last year, we're going to be full. Okay. But as it stands now, I think, yeah, we'll, be fine. Okay. Um, but what you posted, I uh, like. Uh, that was fine. Okay. Yeah, that looked great. Okay. So maybe you'll just like keep interest in, and as long as people know the details now, and that's, unless you want, unless, you know what I could do, is that going to be like the trophy? Yes. Okay. I can take a picture of that tonight and post that, or do you want to keep it a secret? Well, so I have a question. Let's, before we, let's just say that for the agenda. Okay. And keep going okay. along with it. Well, that's the yeah, stuff I need. Forward. That's the stuff I need. I have plenty of content for for Facebook and social media for all the other things. I just need more for the car the car show. Um, advertise. We're still boosting that one. We're still doing that one post, and it's getting billed like every fifty dollars every 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 time we hit fifty dollars, we get billed. Right? That's what you're getting. Okay. I don't have any other updates. I'm going to start updating the website with the vendors and their lots, like I did two years ago, so people can actually look at the lot mm -hmm. and which vendor is in what lot. Okay, excellent. That's all. Okay. Super. Um, volunteer coordinator, Christine Medlesa. Um. So I put out the information for the contact list. I've got a few people that signed up, but I didn't really boost it or try to get it back out as much as I should have. I went ahead and commented on it. So it went up to the top of the page on the citizens group. So hopefully we'll get a few more that'll sign up through there. Um, I have to talk to Melissa and see when, you know, the, you know, the national night out obviously, but I don't know if there's any other things we could do beforehand where we have us like a sign up in person type of, you know, where we could be at an event in the city. Well, we missed the or the Lions Club one, and that's my fault. I should have told you oh, to yeah. do that. That was on Sunday, but or Saturday, but we were gone. Or we were out of town, so I couldn't yeah. be there in myself. That would have been a good opportunity, but so, so yeah. I do have a couple comments about National Night Out. I am working on a visual like flyer poster kind of thing. Do I need that? I should have ready probably by Thursday. 
do I need to have somebody look at that and like have it approved before we, I take that to national night out or just have somebody spell check it and be like, yeah, that looks okay. Or. I would have you touch base with Chair Lynn. City okay. office. They're doing all the planning and they send letters out for donations and they've got donations and they're pulling together that agenda. And uh, Chair Lynn and Renee are, are heading that up. And uh, I'm sure they'd appreciate whatever we can help with advertising. They've done some already on the website. Okay. And so a second thought that I had as far as reaching out other than National Night Out and providing like a in-person sign up for people that are don't do not have a social media presence um i was curious dana if it's if it's acceptable or not you've been doing the tuesday nights come talk with me would it be appropriate if i were to come on a tuesday night and we could advertise that people could stop by city hall and sign up for volunteering on a night that you would be there so the building's open we already know that I mean, we could, but I'm going to be honest. Um, it's rare. It's only one person has ever, or two people have ever come at night. Usually people come during the day. So okay. I'm here and it's open, but there's rarely somebody that comes. Um, okay. So, I don't so maybe, maybe something that I can do is plan to um, speak at the next township and or the next um, city council meeting, just briefly get myself on the agenda to get the word out. Um, that might be something I could try too. Well, that's super awesome that you think people listen to our <laughs> city council meetings. No, so I don't think that'll work either. I honestly think the citizens page is your best bet. Um, okay. I, over and over, that's where people get their information. And then I think you know, is from from in the past. Then that National Night Out, when um, I think Marcy was heading it up, there was a ton of interest there. So I do think that those two things are going to be your best bet and not to waste your time. Okay. <laughs> I think it okay. would be a time to do it any other way. Not to be. I'll just. I'll just get Geraldine the same information that I'm going to provide at National Night Outs then to have at City Hall. So anyone that wants to or stops by there and asks about it, it will be available at any time. It's Alyssa, I just, if we had a PDF of the information, I think we could send it out to a couple of distribution lists for the West or the West Side. Yeah, the, the um, partners groups have a couple of Yeah, the people. HOAs. You guys, I have that on the agenda that you guys are going to ask or send something to the HOAs. That would be helpful. Correct. Yeah. But also, I, so I started uh, playing around in Sign Up Genius too, and just adding some slots and just getting some looks to it and just started playing around, but I haven't finalized since I want to make sure that I have all the slots and all the information and things yeah. that, slots that are already open because we have some people who, and then I, I've got an email for a vendor that needs help. So there's another, you know, area that we can have someone sign up. So Melissa, when you get the stuff that you want to do for an in-person sign up, I'd love to take a look at it, work on it and help out however you want me to. Yep. I, I, I will have that ready by Thursday. I just barely survived my daughter's high school graduation yesterday. So I now have full time to dedicate to my gold rush responsibilities. Um, so I think let's touch base because I'm going to have a lot more free time now. So talk about the very for the HOAs. Yeah. So you have Cedar Woodlands one and two. Yeah. Okay. And Riverwood Hills is Steve McNamara. That's what I can never remember who that and is, Steve. Make sure I give that to you before. Yeah, give me yeah. that because then I'll go ahead and send, I'll send what I have now and then you know for just the contact list and then let them know that the signups will be coming out soon and you know that type of thing. So that way we can kind of push. To, to those two groups. And so. the new Riverbend oh. HOA was just established here uh, last week. So I'll give you the president's name. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Okay. But there's other so this is River... HOAs, but I don't know. Dan is here. Yeah, Zumbro Hills is, I can give you that one. Is it River Hills or River Park on the West. River River Bend. No, on the west side though. Riverwood Hills. Riverwood River Hills. Hills. Yeah, that's the Hills. biggest Thanks. one. Is plus. <laughs> no, that's cool. Get. And Zebra Hills. Zebra Hills. Yeah, it's. 
Yeah, yeah. thank no, that'll be good because then we can. I'll push up what I have now, and then once Melissa and I figure out how what else we want to communicate, then we can put that all out then too. Yeah, with the uh, national night out there, uh, Geraldine and, and Renee have been working on it. They haven't talked too much about the logistics yet, but in the past we've just had a card table with a sign on it and chairs. So. Okay, um, t-shirts, I know we've been talking about those. Any updates? I think that's pretty well. That's done. Carol, I don't have, I don't know anything about that. And I think that's. Okay. She's getting them through, uh, I can't remember. <laughs> okay. 5K update. Yeah, you guys, we're doing kind of poor on the 5K. <laughs> um, we have 12 whole people signed up, but. I got reassured today because I just double checked with the the race management company and they said that's what they're seeing and they're seeing really slow to sign up. But then in the weeks prior, it's it gets back up. But people are just hesitant because of so much being canceled in the past to sign up early. So I think that that's what we're seeing. Um, I really so I've said it many, many, many times. I'm not a runner. I don't I don't know the groups to to share with. So if you do, please share because I have done as much as I can. I have found just by digging on the website on or on Facebook and on in Rochester area. And I have promoted as much as I can or ask them to, but I'm sure I'm missing stuff just because I don't know that I don't have any contacts. The people I know are crazy runners, like ultra marathon runners. They don't run 5k. You know what I mean? <laughs> and we found we're in the the high school league. Like we can't we can't recruit our cross country kids because we're in that time frame, right? No, I think yeah, it's start the tryout like start the second years. yeah, it's like the twelfth or you know, it's right around the middle of August. Yeah. And then they start have yeah, they start running that's third week of August. Yeah. But I think they can compete if there's no monetary like I think they can it's tricky to look back into that again. I don't I can ask. Yeah, I don't I mean Andrew ran cross country for yeah. five years. I don't think they can. I don't think they can sign up for any races after they start. Okay, after practice, sure. Yeah. So um, my other, th so I, I, I'm confident if, if, so we could all just agree to really push that out, help me push that out because I just don't have, I'm doing what I can, what I know, but I, I know I don't, don't know at all about racing. Um, my other thing is I'm really wondering how sponsorship is coming along. So I have gotten six sponsors and I have, I, nobody's, I haven't gotten it. I think, no, Alyssa updated. I think Alyssa updated. I, I only, I volunteered for the Casey's one and I submitted that. You did. Okay, perfect. And did you hear back? I haven't heard back yet, but they said as long as it was in within 30 days before they okay. would get back to us. So All right. I have a confirmation and I can follow up. If I don't perfect. Know soon, but. And then has anybody, and Melissa's doing, said for sure, or no auctions. Has anyone else? I have I have three. I have myself. I have Jason's business, and I have the auction house. So there's three at a hundred. So what is the just, your, is yourself Remax or is Jason Remax or what? Jason's Jason's Bell Mortgage. Bell Mortgage. Yep. Okay. And then I will do, um, I can do Tilly's and gas and go to. Okay, and it, Melissa, what are you, I, so what I need from you then is um, your logo, the logos for the shirt. Yep, yep, Perfect. and I have, I am getting those ready. I'll have those ready for you on Thursday as well. Okay, just throw them, just send them to me in the, via. Or, email. email. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, has anybody else been able to, I just haven't put my previous shirt on to go around. And just okay, so so at this point we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and we need more 
to make this work, especially since we don't have people signing up. Um, so, and I have, I have a line out to Hilltop that I have okay. not, not uh, called them, but I have my information stacked okay. up here. Is there anyone else that could help, help us out? My name's on three or four of those, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Do you want to send that updated list out? Is it in the shared it's, drive it's, or is it? Sh yeah, it's a Google thing. It's there. So it's updated. It's so, update, always like updated. The link has, yeah, been sent. Yeah, we agree. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So um, the thing is, I need, the, I, like, next meeting is our the absolute latest I can okay. get anything. So, and if we don't, I mean, I hate to, I don't know, we would, if we don't get sponsors and we don't get runners, then we're just gonna cancel the race and we're out a lot of money. So I need you guys to help me. Thanks. What do we need to ask for? So I sent out all this information. Okay, um, we'll go look at all that. Yeah, but I can give it to you here. I, I have a sponsor, like, this is what you give them. Thank you for sponsoring. You can give them this um, sponsor sheet, like hang this at your place if you want. Then there's all the cards we need to distribute. Yep. So I just need Got it. help doing all that and getting the word out, getting the word out and getting sponsors. Okay. And then I- Dina, if you were half, if, if you had to guess how many more sponsorships or what kind of numbers are you looking at that we need in the next 30 days? So I'd like at least, um, I think we had 15 or so last year. So yeah, if we could get, you know, six more, wait, what are we at? Did I say we're at eight? You said six. Whatever she just said. Yeah. So I think, Nine, yeah, if we could get like six more sponsors, I'd be comfortable. I am, they are, um, okay. I, the food shop and church are going to talk about it too. So they, I might have another one. Um, Christine, I think I have you down for asking Tim Graham. Did you ever do that? Okay. Until you said it, I'm like, he, <laughs> he did, he did sponsor one year. So he yeah. might be willing to I'll do it again. Ask, I've got okay. a star in my notes. <laughs> okay. in River Park. You want me to take yeah, that? he's, yeah. They're, well, they're like almost backdoor neighbors probably. Yeah, it's a few, oh, yeah, but yeah, yeah, we've had our senior photos with them. and Well, okay. they've done it before. Um, yeah. But yeah, when you said sponsors, I'm like, oh my gosh. Gas and go. Melissa, were you going to ask gas and go? I have you by there. Yep, I'm going to ask. Yep, yep I'm going to ask. I'm going to do, um, I'm going to talk to Chantel. And then I also will talk to Tammy over at Tilly's. And then um, now that I know like what you need, I have two or three other people I can try to tap. Um, Hawks Home Services in Orinoco is another neighbor of mine and Corey's. I can ask him. I would bet he would probably do it. Um, and there's a couple local uh, Remax people that love to have their names on stuff. So I will try to tap a couple of them as well and see what we can come up with. I know Hilltop, because Hilltop and the other camper camper world those yeah, are going to be i have those guys you're going to do those okay they've done it in the past too well yeah. before they change so i know in boulder dam i'm just trying to like get all the people who've done it before you know what i mean what about um does anybody have any contacts or know anybody over at thompson's garage door i mean they're new to orinoco but they seem to really like it here i wonder if we should somebody could reach out to them i can do thompson's i've talked to the owner several times Okay, I'll put you on there. All right, that looks good. We just so we just really need to shore this up before because the 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 t-shirt printing needs to happen, so we can't get people's. So not only do I need well, like set up uh, Erin for pop bellies. Yep, or, she's in. Yep, okay. I got her. So what I need is um, before next meeting, probably I'm going to need you to get you know collect the checks that can be written out to Ornoco, downtown Ornoco Gold Rush days. Hundred dollars, and then I can send you the PDF. I think someone asked me just to send them, so there, you guys all you have all this in an email somewhere. But you can also grab them in person, or you grab them here. Um, 
but I need the logo so that I can get the t-shirt started. That's the big thing. That's the only reason I, this stuff is, you know, a time time sensitive is because we need their logo so they're on the t-shirt. And then also if you if you can fill in the Google Doc because then you can like look at what you need. Like I need, you know, and I want to know their t-shirt size because we always give everybody a t-shirt who do, who sponsors. So I always ask for their t-shirt size. And I can I'll just send out all that again. I'll just as a reminder after this. Thank you. All right. Corey, our show. Yeah. Well, like I said, I don't think it's going to be a problem filling my list out. I've got finally today from uh, Mike Goodman's wife. What's her name? Marcy. Marcy, thank you. <laughs> and this is not last year, 2019. And then just Contacts on my own, I've already got uh, four or five that are for sure. So that won't be a problem. Um, I contacted the um, Brian, Brian's Trophy Store and More.com. You can make a trophy. This is one of my personal ones, but I kind of mocked it up with a gold rush thing on it. But he can make a trophy this size, 16 inch, with a, with a car, a vintage looking car on it for $22. What? Yeah, that's all they are. Wow. So $22. I don't know if there's any money in the myself every week. <laughs> What's that? Good. If I'm for $22, 22. I'm buying one for myself every week. And congratulations <laughs> for making it happen. <laughs> you <got> through <laughs> the week. You can't buy your own trophy. Uh, right. You can buy it, someone else can give it to you. This is true. <laughs> it's called the postman, nine o'clock. Participation so award. <laughs> But is there any money in the budget for trophies or uh, my second talked about it? Other than, <laughs> nope. We can get we some donations. <laughs> well, the other option. Well, we talked about something for the best of car. There's no one. Yeah, um, spectator choice, choice award. award. Yeah. Well, are we charging this year to enter or not? Well, that was my question. If there's no money, direct money for a couple of trophies, we could have like a $5 spectator, I mean, a entry fee for. Car show participants. That'd be $325. That's a nice story. Is that normal, Corey? What's that? Is that like the normal thing to do is to charge the five MVP? bucks? Yeah. Yeah, like a five or seven dollar entry fee. And then does everyone so Marcy did those little plaques or something like that? A dash plaque. Do you know what I'm yeah? Oh, a dash plaque. That's a good idea. That's what they she that's what we did before. I don't know how where that money came from. Anybody? Remember? She just donated. She might have. She, she might have donated it. She might have. I never did see the, the plaque itself. I'm not sure if you could ask Marcy. But you will have to get a hold of Marcy. I don't. Yeah. Know, I don't remember. I know the guy that won first place last year was just outside of Orinoco here by Sandy Point, where Fisherman's in Sandy Point area. I can contact him. Oh. I've got him on my list. I don't. The five dollars doesn't seem. Unreasonable. It's no, I have fun. You know, I think everybody would. And it helped cover our expenses. And right. So you just collect the five dollars that day, then? I think that's so. how it works. Yeah. And that would cover. And by uh, July, we should have a pretty good idea. For July meeting, how many cars you might have, or at least contacts. We talked about sixty-five as a magic number, right? Yep, still the number. And with the additional lot, it shouldn't be a problem because we've got less cars and more space. Right. So <laughs> what we found out from Carol is that there was there was a misinterpretation of what the property owner was saying that we going to use the property to the west of the current lot. It's an open space right now. It's a private property. Carol goes to the people, and they're going to be here. What they were saying is you could use the lot, just say them 40 feet of area, 40 by 40 for a camper and two cars. Otherwise, we have the whole lot. So we were just did the opposite. We thought we only had 40 by 40. So um, so we'll mark that out, leave them 40 by 40 foot area. And so it's just going to kind of spread the cars out a little bit more, probably. So and we're going to be, it'd be simpler for us if he marked off the space that he wants, mm -hmm. then we know. Well, they live in Pennsylvania. <laughs> I know that'd be too so. So I was going to take it, do the same thing to put the flags out and yeah. say this is instead of a picture of it and say this oh, is a room. Okay. So 
And they've agreed your last of all, a couple, uh, cut down a couple of trees that are dead, one small one and one that are larger. We don't want any heavy winds or strong winds knocking anything over. So volunteer to take that down. There is a guy that does mow it. Uh, I have this, and he mows it regularly. And if he does, he hasn't mowed it, we can mow it, but otherwise we'll see if he can mow it. Keith Katz is his name. And then you guys have volunteers for the parking attendant or Melissa. <laughs> are you away? I am I am right here. Hey, did you get a chance to talk to Fisher? Would he be able to maybe direct some, you know, people into the parking lot? Um, that is definitely tell me how many people you think you need, and I will make sure you have boys for that, Christine, and I will get those slots filled and or wrangle up some teens for that, no problem. Yeah, definitely one in the parking area and maybe one on the street. Yeah, and we'll have to go to a street. Yeah, so what is one Sorry, enough? Are you excited to do that again? Not just that's yeah, one in the park, like right. but right. otherwise we can help. I'm a pro at it. So. <laughs> so, I guess fishing would be adequate then. Um, okay, uh, come up with a poster. Other than what we've already done for the 5K, or have not any thoughts on that? Nope. Okay. Don't have a lot of. Um, well, I kind of like what Dana did. Do you think um, we should be more specific? Like, you know, plan on meeting at Gas and Go at one o'clock, and then your agenda takes off from there. One thirty, we'll come down Minnesota Avenue. So just tell people to meet. You know, pre-register. Hopefully, I'll have them filled out. Um, People, or maybe we'll just register right there. I don't know what did they do. What did they do last time? But what did you do? You were there. You well, were part we of it. We went to the cruise and then we registered in the lot. Oh, yeah, they ran oh the Part of the cars they walked over. So we're trying to control the number by doing the registration out there yeah, yes. and not yeah. allowing any more people to come in. Corey, are you taking like? Are you getting emails or how are you collecting registrations? Well, like I said, I've got all this information from last year i have emails and most of them have a contact number on it so i'm pretty sure once i get a half a day to sit down and actually make contacts with these people that i'll just fill out the list and i'll say yeah meet up there at one o'clock and then i'll we can assign them a number maybe if they want to have part Corey, why don't you and I hook up this week? I got to finish this flyer for National Night Out for signups for volunteers. We'll throw something together for the car show. I can throw together really quickly, like a registration form that if you have emails or you have phone numbers, we can text it, we can email it, whatever. Let's just get them to fill stuff out. If you feel like you want to do those dash plaques, we can actually just assign them a number as their sort of like confirmation that they're in. And then we'll follow up with an email with the details on where to meet and what time and what that what's the route looks like and whatnot later. So do you still want to wait? Um, Cause do you want information out there like who to contact like yet? Or are you wanting to control it by I think people. I'll control it because, like I said, once I go through this, I don't think, okay. you know, I don't want to be inundated by too many, you know, because okay. I think I have enough to really fill out that 65. Okay. I just have to get confirmations from them all. Perfect. And the trophies, you know, he said they only needed two week, two week head, heads up to prepare them. Yeah. I don't for $22, we could have five trophies. Unless, you know, unless or the grand prize could be maybe a little larger, they're not that expensive. I was kind of surprised too. But. Yeah, it's interesting. So if we did, so if we had like the first, second, third, best in class, and then well, people overall, choice that way that the, the crowd gets to participate a little bit in the people choice award. Mm -hmm. which is kind of a little different spin on a, on a category, which I think people enjoy voting for who they, who they think. I put win. that on there because I, I wrote it down last, I wrote it down in the notes last time. Yeah, good. Is that okay? okay. No, I, think that's a great I included idea. it and I thought we had decided on that. So 
Okay. So um, I make a motion that we allow or spend up to hundred and one hundred and twenty-five dollars for trophies. Second. And also charge a five dollar registration. I'll second that. So we're, we're covering ourselves of the win win here. So. so I give people that want to prepay, how would you like that? I mean, you don't want five dollar checks coming to you. I guess that'd be all right, wouldn't it? Or or who would they do they make it the gold rush or they make city or local or the downtown or local gold rush they're gonna write a check out you gotta write all that out downtown <laughs> or trust me i type it that's okay. well, why i'm asking i type it like a hundred times a day and i you get used to it but i still <laughs> screw up or or noco is the thing i screw up out of all of them I'm like, or I mean, there's so many gold rushes they'll take it yeah, so. sorry I think they'll they'll cash it for DOGR or Gold Rush. Yeah, I can have them make it. Whatever, however you downtown or local Gold Rush. That's you what should I really yeah. have a, like a Venmo account or something. To really <laughs> if they want to donate more, that's even better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. That's how I'm going to write it down. Yeah. And then have it mailed. See, do you guys have a PO or do you have a mail to come yeah. directly in? There's a P.O. Box. Um, 266. 266. P.O. Box. P.O. Box 266. 266. Okay, got it. Okay, we need to. So we'll just have to like wash those checks, keep track of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it might be easier if they just bring $5, but. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking too. Five dollar cash at the at the. Uh, I mean, we could do that. That would that mean people, because we don't need it ahead of time. No, we don't need it. Let's just pay at the registration gas and go. Because our uh, our friends lending us their spare lot aren't requiring any payment. Yeah, that might be a, uh, it's a donation, kind, right? Payment kind or something. I understand. In kind donation of five dollars to cover. Sorry. In kind but, donation of five dollars. For your car registration. Okay, so we'll put that on there. We need to vote on that. We didn't actually vote. Yeah, okay. Any other discussion? Not all those in favor, second probably saying aye. 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 Always no. Okay. Great. Give yourselves a Work on. Okay. All right. Good. Uh, postcards, posters. See the love here. Right there. Take. I brought. I got. I ordered more. We got more. Um, I need you to to take them to put them out where you think people would see them in Rochester, in Pine Island, you know, anywhere. Um, I'm sending them to some of our to some of our vendors who in the past have actually asked us to make postcards and send them to them. So I'm sending those a big packet off tomorrow to um, Decorah, Iowa. I've sent some, I've, I gave some to um, a, a, some people in Pine Island. So if you know of any vendors that are local and go to shows, because not all of our vendors do that. You know what I mean? Like, like not all of our vendors go to a lot of shows. Sometimes our our show is their only show. But if you know local ones, I'd be happy to distribute these and then they can take them with to their shows. So just, um, or you go ahead and take them. I, I have plenty. I've got this box full of stuff now, so. We can't arbitrarily just send them out to our list of dealers either. Vendors can't, right? It's so expensive. Yeah. I mean, the packets are spendy that I've been sending out. I've just been donating that. But I know I don't think that's a cost. I'm just sending them to people who I know in the past have asked or who are who go to a lot. I actually might send some to Margaret, the fabric lady, because she travels all over the country. I'm going to reach out to her. 
Yeah, you and Lori made some good contacts here. Yeah, that was a really good we walking did. around. So. We did. So that's, okay. I don't really have any other updates. Okay. Um, camper host, I think we've got that. Well, our Any camper more? host, I have not gotten a hold of because he just had, well, he, his wife just had a baby on Wednesday I, or Thursday. I had sent messages out on Wednesday and got a message back saying he's out because his wife is having a baby tomorrow. <laughs> so, um, follow up. but I'll follow up with them when I follow up with the donations for the, um, we'll talk. Yeah. But they didn't think that was a problem at all. So we'll, we'll take care of it. Good. Well, Rick didn't have a baby. His friend that he was <laughs> recommending to do the host is having a baby. <laughs> oh, I see. That cleared up. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I was like, wait a second. No. <laughs> well, baby showers happening when there's no baby there. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. Civil Air Patrol, I think we're, I think that's all fixed. Carol. Uh, Grace Lutheran Church contract. I don't you know, sent to them. Carol sent it. Um, have not heard anything back. Let's follow up with Carol. One thing about the pine tree lot. You may notice that there's a row of trees gone. Uh, I talked with Keith. I found out there was a gentleman, Keith Couts, landscaping. Talked to him last Tuesday and he was contacted by the church. So it's been seeded and straw put down now on the weekend. So hopefully with some rains and cooler weather, we'll have grass um, by August. And we still have vendors along the road there. So okay. you're gonna do a rain dance or what? Yeah. It worked here about three weeks ago, but not the last time I did it. So. <laughs> So that you, the vendor that was worried about that has been informed that Stephanie or Stephen or somebody was asking they, they contact City Hall and we got them squared away. I, guess, so. I mean, just to, if we shared that with Geraldine and Renee, if any questions come in about Gold Rush, you should contact Carol. Okay. Food tickets, I think we're okay there with the same approach. Ticket uh, to 5K. Um, Bib will give them a two dollar off food voucher, and we'll, yeah, the BFW and the fire department are going to give twenty meal tickets to go into the uh, volunteer usage during the event. Uh, marking of lots, something I need to start spending just a little bit of time. There's a couple of places I haven't marked. Get some bit cooler, we'll make sure that gets done. Hand sanitizers. I think we can cross that off. Or yeah, that off. needs to be taken off. Yeah, I wrote that last so. time. <laughs> Is there anything else that we've talked about here that I should take off? I think that's yeah. one question on the marking of lots. Um, if you're going to have lot marking, days or weekends or things like that. I think we should start getting them on the calendar because like my weekends are full. And I know, you know, two years ago, I wasn't able to be at quite a few of the, I had no idea it was a thing anyway. And um, it's- No, it's, no reason why we can't do that now. Yeah, it's middle Especially of- Especially the ones leading up to the two weekends before and Wednesday nights and stuff like that. Yeah, so if, you know, if there are things that we can do that aren't on the weekends that we could do during the week or all the that was we did it during the week. It was all during the week. Oh no, we did the week of yeah. the week also were Saturday morning. Yeah, there was a lot of Saturday mornings. So, oh maybe I'm talking about the stupid stabbing we the ground. Because I didn't make any of those because <laughs> so, I was so working. We that was but. weeknights. Mm -hmm. I put white plates on some of the corners. Well and you put the magnet thing down there. All right, you put metal down there now, so we yeah, I did put the metal down there. So now we can just see painted white, so hopefully we can find them there. And we don't have Paul. Nancy Quimby had something to make them up. We knew where everything was. Do you think Paul would join us for those those scavenger hunts? Okay. Do you think Paul would join us for those scavenger hunts? Oh, Paul, you could ask him. 
you know, he was a, he was <laughs> necessary. He I know, mean, well, he does. He put them all there, but originally. <laughs> Yeah, so do we want to look at dates or right now you're saying? No, I'm just saying no, we don't have to we'll, do it now, but okay. if, if we can we start thinking well about that. Dates that we, we can do for all. I'll send an email out and. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Does anybody need to know what that is or have we talked about that? I have no idea what you're doing. So the, so, have you been to Gold Rush? Yep. Do you know how like everything's marked with white lines? Yep. So they come in paint, but before they do that, we have to find these marks in the ground that show like the corners so that when they come to, and then the, we mark them with like a nice. orange spray paint or whatever. So they know where to start and go, you know what I mean? And then we like measure, it's, it's a whole process and it works slick, yeah. but the finding of those, yeah marker those corner markers is tricky but we think we've solved it with yeah with a now we're gonna use a metal detector metal detectors are a magnet yeah i got some mag i got one wow. they form two intense. magnets with a long pole you can just reach over the ground and hopefully just pull it down so it was literally like a scavenger hunt stabbing right. the ground yeah. looking for these big cement it's funny so we mark, one night we marked the corners yeah. for the the major corners of the lots and then uh, the next time we meet um, we start measuring off it. They're 15 by 20 foot lots, most of them. And so we, again, so you measure them off and you get spray paint. And then on the Saturday morning, the Saturday before the event is when we hire a company that comes out and they go out and do all the striping and they actually make up the, uh, the lines and the lots. And, we and basically give you just people directions and that type of thing. one person here, one person here, so that they can line from one person to the next. Mm -hmm. So you just, Hard that part, but you oh. just have to like be their guide so they go in a straight line. Huh. <laughs> and like on the parking lot, there's some black marks that we've marked mm -hmm. over the years. There's like all these mysterious T's all over town, like, yeah, yeah that's what they are. <laughs> and there's a lot of marks up and down Minnesota yeah. Avenue that I went last August or a year ago. I went around and marked all those just because they're going to be worn off if it had we not done that this year or for this year because we went two years of marking them. So, yeah. So anyway, okay. it's just like you learn as you go, that kind of stuff. And it, there's no real talent to it, except. <laughs> and then that Saturday and then that Wednesday night is when we lay the actual, there's a tag, white tag with the vendor number on it. And, and we lay that, essentially just lay it on that area of that lot. So when the vendors come in Thursday noon, they know, and they'll know which lot is they're assigned. And that just helps them identify that. And then each one of us as a committee will be at one will be a D lot, one will be an E lot, B, G, K, whatever. And you'll kind of be the point person to kind of go around and ask if anybody's having trouble finding their lot. You'll have a directory, and kind of point them to where the direction that type of thing. Sometimes you play traffic control. People are coming in for traders, you go, you know, but they're all very nice. I mean, it's, it just takes time. Okay. Uh, let's see. Chamber of Commerce. Um, I uh, signed up to be the kind of the liaison um, with the Rochester Chamber of Commerce as the downtown or local gold rush days representative. And we're a new member. I think we talked about that at the last meeting. So um, I've been to one event. I went down to the, uh, they had a AM Expresso, which was down at the Berkman, the new apartment. So I went down there last Friday uh, morning from 7.30 to about 8.00. I couldn't stay as long as I wanted to, but anyway, it was very, you know, you just, uh, it ends up being just a lot of networking and people. Yes. That's when you should bring all of our promotional materials. That's why I should, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Next day well, I'm I'm espresso. Of coffee and a donut. I don't know. I, no. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Now, next so time, yeah. Yeah, that's next a, time. That's an excellent point. Yeah, yeah. Next time, bring so, that. But everybody I talked to knew about downtown local Gold Rush. Good. Are you having it this year? I said, yeah, we are. You know, it's, 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 it's out there. It's just encouraging people to. We're open this year. So, so is there? Um, I've sent them digital things, but is there? 
do they want our information to put around? Like, I don't know how that works. And I think you have to um, do that yourself. Like, I think you go to the event and you'd bring it. Okay. They won't. They're not. I don't think they're going to give it out. Okay. So next time, I'll just you go home with some of this, and then you go have <laughs> more coffee and donuts, yeah, and then. Because yeah, then. Then. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I'm going to do the same. I'm Let's have to event over on a drone and drop them over. <laughs> yeah, and no, I'm that's the, a good point. I'll, I'll ask, um, I can check with the, job, the people that's, uh, at the chamber about if that's proper or how they do things like that. And you're doing the same thing with Pine Island okay, and yep. Chamber of Commerce. So. Yeah. Okay. All right, next time, lots of statistics. I just, um, So just a general overview. It says of June eighth, we have got well, you thirty-six thousand dollars, and we have uh, two hundred ninety-seven paid lots, uh, eight hundred seventy-one total. Two hundred ninety-seven paid lots. Yeah. And what did you say? Eight hundred seventy-one total. <clears throat> but the eight hundred seventy-one generates. Ninety-four thousand nine hundred dollars, which you know we've never done that for a long time. Right. Um, and there's two hundred and thirty-three dealers signed up. Two hundred thirty-three dealers. Okay. Did you say two hundred thirty-nine uh, paid? There's 297 at page 297, all prepaid. That's a question for Carol, probably. What's that? Yeah, Maybe that's a question for paid. Carol. Yeah. Yeah, some dealers had multiple lots. Yes, many. Yes. So it's coming along, but uh, compared to this time in 2019, 2018, we're in that 40. $41,000 range. So not too far off, but like last year in 2019, there was 15 deposits came in at one time. So that's where the big, the big dollars come in. And that can still happen in June too. So. Yeah. Do you have records of some of those years, how many vendors were present also? I, it's probably there someplace. I don't have it on this. Just curious. I mean, what do we look like compared to past years? We can find that data. Is there? I'm sure Carol has it somewhere too. Yeah. Okay. Um, RD Geis is, um, they've relocated out of Rochester to Albert Lee. Um, and we were looking for them, and they re they relocated to Albert Lee because they had a larger warehouse, but uh, they're still able to provide us ice. Carol talked to the gentleman, and I gave him a call again today just to confirm. But what they'll have is <clears throat> two trailer or a trailer similar to what we had the last year, like a pull behind smaller trailer by the info booth. And uh, pardon me? by the info booth by the info booth, yeah. Um, we probably won't have a truck here, but the trailer will hold like 120 bags between the 20 pounds and the five pound bags. So we will have them bring over the first trailer. What we'd like to do, this is confirmed, but Carol shared that with him. She talked to him before she left and I was going to follow up, but we used about 160 bags, I guess, 20 pound bags, something like that in 2019. So we'll bring the one trader over for Thursday, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday morning, we would ask them to bring a second trader over with another 120 bags to make sure we have enough for Saturday and Sunday so we don't have two traders sitting here at our expense. So that's our plan is to have him <clears throat> bring that second trader over early Saturday morning. We think that would help us get us through the year. We also talked about, and we could. We've had $5, 20 pound bags for some time. 
and just like everything else, we think we should consider increasing the price for a 20 pound bag. How much are they charging us? Um, that's a good question. I don't think I have that. Unless you know, Alyssa, I don't have any. I will find out and send it to you or send it to the committee. So I'm thinking we, we should consider raising it a couple of dollars, maybe $3 to $8. I think $10 might be a stretch, but I do think we it's been $5 for years. And, uh, Can we wait and decide how much to raise it to until we find out what the cost is on it? No, we'll find out when we. Yeah, we'll find out next time and then like how much do they charge for a 20 pound bag up at gas and go mm -hmm. so in 2019 we we paid 1200 dollars for the ice so let's see kara has some details unless you a 20 pound bag of ice at gas and goes over seven dollars i know i bought eight of them this weekend <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Don't 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 have to go get emergency ice is all I'm saying. But I would think that somewhere between uh, seven and eight dollars a bag is going to be right on par with what you'd pay if you had to run to the gas station and get a twenty pound bag. And just the convenience of it being here, mm -hmm. it makes a little more having a five dollar bill is easier than one. So I know uh, that's the only problem. But at the same time, we need to. Most of them pay with 20s though anyway, so we just have to have a lot of change. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Most people pay with a 20 anyway, it seems like, so you have yeah, to have a lot yeah. of change. So you're right, it may take a little change, but a little yeah. more change, but I think we need to yeah, increase it. Increase, and, yeah. uh, I guess we can uh, we'll do some background and maybe decide our July meeting then. Is it 20 pound bag we said? Mm -hmm. How many, how much is that trailer gonna hold? 120? I wanna bags? say 120, but. 120 bags? I'll get more deals, okay. 20 pounds, yeah. There's a combination, we didn't sell many five pound bags, very few. Uh, so. so what, we have five or 20? Is that what we had? Yeah, we had I don't remember points, that. Yeah. yeah, okay. We could do. Or do they not even do 10 pound bags of ice? You can tell you don't buy a lot of ice. I think that's the typical five or 20. Five or 20? Even at a store, yeah. Okay. okay. The golf carts, um, check about that one less price. And we will keep them over here in Carol's daughters and son-in-law's property where Carol used to live in the courtyard. And you, and you will take care of um, um, having the keys available on that Thursday morning, Wednesday night, typically is when you can pick them up. And, uh, some people drive them home. Who's Andy? Who is oh, Andy? Oh, I thought you saw Andy. Andy's Carol's son in law. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't think anybody else in the room knew who uh, Andy yeah, was. Andy either. <laughs> yeah. Sandy and Andy. So I would like to discuss, like, a, since so many people are new this year, like a real like breakdown of duties on the weekend of Gold Rush. Yeah, um, because I, you know there were so many people that we've lost that really knew what to do with traffic and with how to handle people and what where do you step in and where do you not step in and all that stuff so maybe at our july meeting we really break it down and maybe and yeah expectations yes and mm -hmm. like it would be really good if joanne was here too because she has been doing this for so long and you know just You've been, you've been doing it for a long time. I mean, it's really just you two yeah. and Carol and Joanne. You know, the rest of us are new. Have you volunteered before, Corey? Oh, God, 30 years ago. So <laughs> yeah, okay. Merle was still, you know, it's totally run differently than it sure. was back then. 
You notice succession planning is on the agenda as well. And if we're going through all the effort to talk about what happens when, it would probably be helpful in that regard too, to put together, if I'm sure it exists, and if it doesn't, like a little book of like, you know, three weeks out, this is what gets done by whom, you know, week of, you know, on Tuesday, we always do this. On Wednesday, we always do this. You know, these are the contractors that you're hiring on this week. You know, that, you know, and whatever. And um, and that way we won't have to do it every single year. Well, and it kind of goes, I was just gonna say, it kind of goes along with the, yeah, the keys are gonna be with Andy and you're the only person, well, maybe the two of you are the only per people in the room who know who Andy is and where the keys are gonna be. Because <laughs> nobody else has any idea. And it's this, it's the same thing with the ice, it's the same thing with the golf carts. Like who orders the golf carts? Where do they come from? They just all of a sudden show up. All of a sudden the ice shows up, all of a sudden the sea, like the radios show up. The yep, that's all the, Carol. the cart, you know, the trailer, gold rush trailer gets moved to the correct spot and plugged in with power. And how does that happen? And so I think there's a lot that goes on that even as a committee, we never talk about. It just like right. appears yeah. and it's perfect. It's Carol, but as a committee, we don't, we're not. And the committee is always evolving because it's consists of the council, which changes every two years, possibly, right. may, maybe not always, but possibly can change every well, two years. Well, like last year, yeah. we walked into the trailer and I kind of got a, who are you? <laughs> I'm right. like, no, who are you? You haven't been to one of our meetings yeah. and you're asking me who I am? Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know what's going on here, but I don't like it. <laughs> so I think we just need to have that kind of clear. Yeah. No, that's a good point. We do have a task list. Um, we've used it in 2019. I pulled yeah. out a task list and it identifies those weekends. Um, we can add to that task list of the things that, um, you know, there, you're right, there's a lot of things that happen to just appear. Uh, we rent tables from Pine Islands for some of the vendors and who drops off the golf carts and who does the ice and, and civil air patrol. So there's a lot behind the scenes. And I think that will, well, we'll just, we're almost to the point on the agenda of uh, the succession planning and kind of give you a background why that's on the agenda. That would be great for volunteer recruitment too, because rather than just, you know, saying, hey, we need volunteers for Gold Rush, we can say, you know, we need two volunteers to do eight hour shifts um, parking, right? Or whatever parking consists of A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. And that'll probably help the yield too and then get more folks involved. So that's. Yeah, we'll have that's that kind of the description you're doing. Yeah. Volunteers, the ice, and yeah, garbage. And yeah, we have all the duties and then the time slots, and then the number of time slots will all be well, even for like the lot marking. I mean, we could we could recruit instead of all of us going to do lot marking and just having an us, we could recruit a high school sports team that's looking for volunteer activities to come mm -hmm. on a Saturday morning and help with that. They may not be able to come and do a weekend um, of Gold Rush, but they could come for a few hours on a Saturday or a Wednesday night when we're looking for that point. <laughs> but I mean, flagging the lots, like my kids came and helped last year and, um, you know, Andrew helped unload trailers the, the day that they were unloading, which was awesome. <laughs> that I'm sure. heard the HOAs too. Yeah. Hey, you want to get to know your neighbors that you haven't seen in the last 18 months? Yeah. You know, you guys are all doing <laughs> yeah. 6 to 8 p.m. on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying there's a lot. I think there's a lot that we we do that we could probably get other people's help with and that could make them feel more a part of it and maybe recruit them for additional yeah. Okay, no, good comments. Um, sentence to serve. This is, um, we work at the sheriff department. These are uh, kids and adults, teenagers and adults that uh, need to work community time off. We've used them in the past. And so there'll be a group of, um, it varies from 10 to 15 people that come out. Um, deputy sheriff and charge group brings them out in the van and they work, uh, Real close with our uh, public works, Dan Kane Dalen, Kane Dave Dolan. And 
So we have um, basically there's at least three items that they deal with. One is we have garbage cans all over the, the area. There's like 100 plus of those. And so right now they're stored up at the uh, reservoir in the chain link fence. And so they bring those out. And then we have their location of where they go. We have a map and pictures. And so that's one of the things they do. They also put in the no parking sticks that are orange. We place those along a lot of different streets around here for no parking on cars. Um, they will also help with the hallway is, is open for the bathroom use. And so there's plastic that we put down and they do that uh, Sunday or the, uh, the day before to protect the floors and everything. So, you had a question, Dana? Well, I just thought about on our agenda tomorrow. Sorry, that made me think about our. Never mind. <laughs> so, so they're so they'll be here Wednesday and Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, Thursday morning is when the vendors line up, and at noon they'll all come in at noon to set up. And they will come back on Monday to help with the cleanup. They'll pick up the barrels. They'll pick up the sticks. Really saves the community used to do that, and that was just. Horrendous amount of work that oh, we, we still have a lot of work to, but that's just a big help. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work for our public works people. So, mm -hmm. okay, succession planning. The reason that's on there, Carol talked to me about a week and a half ago or so before she left, and she's coming up on 30 years of doing the event coordinator. And so um, she would like to retire. Not this year. Uh, she will continue as a mentor during next year. And so and there's, there's a lot of her sometimes a 24 seven job, but that's because she's handling a lot of these items that we saw in the sheet earlier in the meeting with all these expense items. And everything. So this isn't, um, we're not making any decisions or anything, anything tonight. I just want to bring this to everyone's attention that um, she's talked to me and she uh, is, would like to kind of take a graciously uh, turn the committee over or turn the activities over to however we want to structure it. I have copies of the current, her job description, if you will. And um, we can use that as a guide. But I would think that between now and our extra. November annual meeting, if you will, is that when we can have something pre prepared how we're going to move forward in 2021 or 22 of how we might be structured. We think there's in my conversations with Carol. Um, she thinks there's a lot of enthusiasm and uh, <clears throat> wherewithal to maybe restructure how we go ahead with going forward with an event coordinator, taking some of those responsibilities of, um, <clears throat> that, was, that we've talked about on show expenses and maybe divvy some of those things up with the committee members. And um, still, we still need an event coordinator that does the 24-7, uh, taking care of the, the contracts, the phone calls, dealing with the vendors, essentially, signing the lots, that type of thing. But a lot of the extra important peripheral work, um, we can maybe divvy that up with uh, committee responsibilities as one thought. So, um, so we'll continue to talk about it. But I just want to bring that to everybody's attention that uh, we need to seriously give us some work. And like I said, she, when she came into the job 30 years ago, uh, she, there's a guy by the name of Ed Simon. Of course, you're about the only one that would, might, might, might know who that is. But when Ed was the, he came before Merle or after Merle, but yep, Merle well, maybe. But all I remember is we painted the lines, we rented the, the little line painters like they use at the football fields and whatnot, mm -hmm. and painted the lines and set all the garbage can, you know, in various places. Yeah. Um, Everything else kind of a blur. <laughs> because after that was done, it was beer drinking. 
before and after the striping? Before, during, and after. <laughs> you know, some of the lines got a little wiggly, but you know, it worked out. Um, Get a trophy for that too. <laughs> what? Did you, did you get a trophy for that one too? <laughs> no, just ribbons. <laughs> Participation yeah, ribbons. Ribbon. <laughs> <clears throat> so that's. Um, and Carol wanted to bring that up. We just worked out when that she's gone this week too to to bring this up and. Uh, Thirty years. So I think it's it's very. We, we knew the time was coming and it's here, so now we need to seriously look about how we're going to move forward in next year. Um, at the same time, um, we haven't paid, paid, paid Carol either. Uh, back in 2019, about this time, we paid her a third of our salary, and uh, that was $2,600, so it's equivalent to about $8,000 a year. I think that's right, yeah. 9000 so there's because right now she's working free gratis, which isn't correct, isn't right either. She be, should be paid for all the time that she does put in. That was she's always been paid in the past, and there's no reason why we shouldn't. Uh, I know she feels very strong about supporting the organization and everything, but there is a there is a a point where we need to really um, consider paying her for her time or angles and payment checks or something like that. We can, if we want to do one now, we can do another one closer to the show or right after the show. Uh, so in the past, how was it? it Usually was, it was three payments, one about now, one before the show, one after the show, I think. Yeah. And why? And that goes into our, well, this administration cost. I, mean, I feel like we should just be doing the same thing we always did. Yeah. Why would we make it different this year? No, we should. I, I, yeah. I would all for this. I would continue about. I mean, I don't think that needs to be a discussion or a motion because it's how we've always done it, right? I don't remember voting on that before. No, nope, it's just a check over five hundred, so someone else signs it, but that's the only thing right. we've done. Okay. I mean, there's just be a payment. It's an like, administrative cost. It's right. like paying. It's a, it's a yeah. job that we've hired. She's, You're right. Just do that. It's just right. a matter of doing it. Okay. So if that's okay, I'll just go ahead and have Alyssa yeah. write a check out for the, the $2, people. $666. <laughs> Pay the people. That need to be, pay the people that need to be paid. So is she doing that because part of it's going to go to Joanne? Or what, 2006? I can't remember. Back in 2019, that's where I come across the figure in the checkbook. Yeah, because I think she, I think I she, think she did assigned something some of it to Joanne. Joanne. Because Joanne did some work while she was out. I think, yeah. The last few years, well, yeah, whatever, yeah, whatever she's arranged with Joanne, it's out of her nine thousand. So if she's doing something to Joanne, that'd be the two thousand six sixty six. I think that's the. And David was so sick. I think that's when she. Okay, we'll touch base with Carol when she gets back. And we'll go ahead and send her that thirty percent check. For sure. Okay. Good. I'd um, like to nominate Mel Griggs for this job. Is there a second? <laughs> You're out of your mind. You're all out of your mind. Holy smokes. <laughs> I'm reading this. This is this is all you, Mel. This is all you. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I am gonna be coming into some some time off, but I, I, I kind of need it. Um I wouldn't mind. I, you know, I think I I think it's a great. I really think it's a great idea that along with what Lori's saying and along with like succession and whatever coming in as a new person, there wasn't a whole lot of information or a whole lot of structure that was, um, you know, provided for new people. Every single time I'm on this call, I learn new things. Like I didn't even know that we paid Carol. I knew Carol wasn't on the committee, but I had no idea that that was an expense that, um, that we were incurring and not that it matters, but um, as a committee, I'm not saying that people are not pulling their weight or anything, but is there a limit on how many people can be on the committee? Because if we do take this on as a committee and we don't continue to offer this as a, uh, as a paid, uh, like a third party kind of an admin situation, can we add people to the committee that we can put on teams 
to handle all of this event stuff, like the magical ice and the trailers and the traffic control and, you know, all of this stuff, um, I think is going to need to be divvied up because it can't just land on someone, or I think our turnover rates is going to continue to be really high. So I just something to think about. Um, and I, I don't know what that looks like. And I don't know if it's written in stone, how many people can be on the committee, but maybe it's time to start thinking about growing that so that it, it's not a difficult process to go through later. Yeah, but the charter right now, or the bylaws, say it's made up of the five council members and four public for a total of nine. So that would require a bylaw change uh, is one thing. I think too, a lot of these, outside of what, you know, the um, following the contracts, the vendors, the follow up, that type of thing. If you get into this expense item, it's just, you know, you wrote a letter to, to, to Grace Luther Church. We call the radio guys up, we call the ice guys up, you know, we call the Civil Air Patrol, send them an email. So in the whole scheme of things, it's really, it's just, it's not that much work. It's just a matter of making sure it gets done. Well, Somebody's that's... accountable for making sure that actions. And right now, Carol does everything. I help her. Carol is the one that located it, and that's what she's asking for is to restructure the job, job description. Yeah, I think we should look into that. I think, I think actually after the show would be a really good time to look into that because then everyone here will have experienced the show and know kind of what goes into it. And then you can, you would have more to say, you'd have more input like this is, but well, like what I, what I think of when I think of this, the only thing I think is like right now, currently in my life, I am taking care of all the social media, all the website, all this stuff. And that might have to change if I go back to work full time, if I, you know, and it'll be very hard to find someone who puts as much time as I put in to do this for free. It would be very hard to find someone who puts as much time as you put in if our new mayor, or if we have a new mayor eventually and, and they are the chair, that's what we can, we have to think of that. And, and so that's the other thing about having a director is that um, they work, we just like this magic stuff shows up and it seems like it's not a lot, but the real work is the, the keeping a communication and keeping, um, keeping in touch with the, our vendors and finding new vendors and all of that. That's, I think the real work behind it and having that one face, that's what we would lose if we split up everything. And that would be that would be hard. Yeah, I think uh, I agree with what you're mm -hmm. saying. I think what's added a lot, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, by taking a year off, it's really messed messed up the system. Because before it was kind of taken for granted. Here's my money for next year. Mm -hmm. Yep, I want the same spot. You know, and they paid yeah. in a year in advance. Now with last year being COVID. You know, it's almost like you're starting over this year with with right. Well, we you lost a lot, you gained a few back. Um, the same thing's happening with their food vendors too. They're yeah. changing over. Some of those food vendors aren't coming back because they retired or they just can't find manpower. Yep. To help out. So there's less and less of the people that do that though. Like the pay before, there's just less and less people because they're they're not here anymore. <laughs> like they either they died. Literally, yeah, every true. year it's it's a there are people. I remember someone told me that, and then and I started realizing, oh, that's true. They're just not with us any longer. Like some of our vendors that you that would do that would pay ahead of time. Now most of our vendors are, I think there's still those vendors, but most of them are. That's why we're we need new blood. We need new vendors. You know what I mean? We're like we. Is the goal of the festival to sustain the same vendor participation year to year or to grow? Or is it be grow. awesome to grow the, the antique market in general? Right. The antique yeah. market is declining or not declining, but can, so that's yeah. why we've over the past few years, like the car show, we're trying to like revive it. And maybe, I mean, we need to think about this too. And as our succession planning right. is, how are we going to, how are we going to attract new vendors and a new, new life into the town. Um, 
and artisans and arts and I mean we could do like an art fair um we could do local right. goods um try to keep it from getting crafty because that didn't work well for a number of similar types of situations but um, but yeah, I agree with you. Artisans and, and are welcome, you know, and we have look honey, we have people mm -hmm. that do that. We have soap, we have people, we have all that. So I think that's already but are um, we marketing to those people? Because we're we're marketing to other we're we're marketing to the antique shows and the trade um, journal, antique dealers yeah. and mm -hmm. the trade dealers or the trade whatever but are we so i've done the marketing on like all the vendor pages i've put it out there um the feedback from our actual antique dealers is not positive when we bring in other vendors like that. right so while we need to grow, we want to grow our our base are the people who've been here the longest do not love it why? So it's a problem but because they, 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 and you will hear this, like, if you pay attention, you'll hear it. They it's used to be a pure show. Like that's like the word, the wording is pure. And it's like, there is no such thing. I mean, what where are you going to find that anymore? But there's people that are still are upset about it. But what if we, we sectioned things off? So we had like the artisans in this section, so we got you know, yeah. so that it's like a shopping area. Right? So, so we, battle lines are drawn. Yeah, that's so that's the thing. That is exactly the thing. Like so, people will avoid certain sections and only go. So when you have them yeah. all mixed in, you actually see you get more more traffic if you have to walk through it. Because I had that same conversation with well, it must have been Carol or somebody. Actually, maybe it was even a. Maybe I had it with Christopher and Holmes. I don't know. I, I like bounce things off vendors I know. And then they said it's actually worse to do that because then you you will you will totally draw battle lines and there will be interesting. Yeah. So if you have it everybody scattered throughout, like we do. It's a real fine line because if you wander too far off of it, it's not a traditional Ornoco gold rush anymore. Mm -hmm. It may be a carnival. Mm -hmm. It may be a a food fair. Mm -hmm. I mean, so but if you want to keep Gold Rush as a traditional, it's it's a real hard balance. I was going to say, but maybe maybe that's not possible. I, I mean, if we have if we have nine hundred spots and we are filling two hundred and fifty of them or three hundred of them, we're doing something wrong. We should yeah, ask the community what they're, they're looking for. Center part of yeah. them. They're they pine trees. It's kind of a misleading number. They are a misleading number. And that silly hill, wherever the hill is. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. we don't do that. Or we don't. It's and now we put, you know, we have cars. But even if we're half, even if we're at half capacity, even if there's 500 and we're at 250, what are we doing? We're leaving money on the table. What are we doing? If, if we're taking our lead from the vendors that are showing up and they're saying, you can't market this to the local artist on the street who wants a spot because it's going to make me mad and I'm not going to come. And the local artist pays and says, I have five other artists that would love to join this. This is awesome. Or if we have a food fair and we all of a sudden start bringing in and lining Main Street with way more food trucks, which would be awesome. Why is that bad for us? Like, I think we have to think longevity and not necessarily catering to, well, it's always been this way and it's a pure show and that's what it has to be because we won't have a show if we don't adapt. Yeah, I agree. And I think that that's a good discussion we have to have. Like, we, I think um, one of the places that has done a really good job of this is Junk Bonanza. Again, it's like a totally different scenario. We're a nonprofit. We're the, like one of two shows in the country like this. And it's just a very difficult thing. Everyone else does whatever they want because they just rake in the money and keep it for themselves and turn over. You know what I mean? And we just don't do that. Um, and then, but what are they doing to rake in the money? Like, I mean, we could be raking in the money. Like, just because we're a nonprofit doesn't mean that we can't be 
charging more, charging more or well they have in it's you know junk or... bonanza's indoor at canterbury downs and it's just they charge a ton and they it's a mission charge admission a ton of admission and it's inside it's yeah i mean it's just a whole yeah it's a very difficult family outdoor quality of shopping to the experience i guess well there's there's a lot of discussion i will say that this is what in my conversation with carol this is what carol's excited about is that the conversation that we're having right here is just that thinking of right. what can we do different how can we do it and that's what she's excited about that the show will continue probably in a different format who knows but i think it's important that we just keep that in mind as we go between now and as we go through the whole show and how can we make this happen and you're right about um, i mean between carol and i we could write a paragraph on each item mm -hmm. and give you all the background information who the contacts are whatever it would and I agree it would help Lizzie and Christine and Melissa and Kristen too. And just also reinforce, you know, so we got something to go from because right now this would be extremely difficult to hand this off to somebody. To me, it'd be there would be a show next year. <laughs> right. It'd be nice to know how many people come because it's an antique show versus they come because it's something to do. Oh, oh we have a survey. Yeah, and we did a survey last year. Oh, good. I'll have to, I should pull it. I'll actually let me put that in my notes and I should send, I can send that out to you guys. I can send the results out to you guys. We did a survey monkey and you know, the other thing that we could do is put another survey monkey together for the citizens page. Um, and just like you said, find out from the community within, and, and we can format the survey so that we don't get crappy responses, <laughs> but you know, what do you want to see more of? Well, I'll tell you what they want. I've heard a million times they want a dance. They want music at night or, you know what I mean? Yeah, like true. there's, that's been so many people have told me that over the years. Um, which we talked about doing last year and then we I mean everything didn't do exploded it. of course or the year before yeah. we talked about doing it and I mean I think we're slowly introducing these things right we have the we have the Lions Club tent and they had music up there and that people Not really enjoyed that mm -hmm. um and I know the fire hall has also done that in the past so it's not like any of this is um we know those things are people like them um, but I mean, they want like a nighttime, you know, like a small town, like everybody's small town, I don't like know, the, pine, the cheese fest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I don't think we want to turn into that. Right. I think we know that we don't want to do that. That isn't well, our goal. It's almost like we're going to warp into a whole different dimension. Like you said, that's going to be a community celebration. This was originated to bring in vendors from around the country right. with the mm -hmm. finest antiques. Mm -hmm. And I know what you're saying, uh, that's going away, but so will the name Gold Rush. It won't be Gold Rush, it'll be mm -hmm. yeah. whatever you want to call it. Right, and I'm not Music ready. Music fest, carnival, food fest, something yeah. <laughs> other than antiques. Right, and I don't think it's something I'm ready to give up because it's my favorite weekend of the year as far as that yeah, goes. Yeah. But no, I mean, there's just no doubt there's a tradition of this is the 48th year for it. So I think yeah. it's, 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 it's the big thing that I've well, seen well, I mean, that's, around these small communities that have these, I'll call it a flea market, mm -hmm. and maybe you girls can attest to it. A lot of it is repurposed antiques. Nobody wants grandma's antique sewing machine or uh, yep. what do you call them? That sewing machine, but the big trendle machine. Mm -hmm. But they make that into something else. It's still an antique, but now it's been repurposed for we, something else. We promote that in our advertising. Yeah. Repurposing. Repurposing. Yeah. yeah. You're totally right, though. That's but, how it's. That's the. That's our biggest. Our vendors who do the best, like Chris Fernholz or some of these guys. That that that's what they do. They pick and they, and they know that that's what they'll sell and that they do really well that way well and then it's not the big antiques that are selling and everybody knows that that's what's so hard is like you want to you want so badly to promote that but maybe we go back to the drawing board and and just analyze who we are and what we want and who our market is and maybe we've got lost in the 
the trade journals and the all, you know all of the things that we've done but we're not digging into the right avenues if we want to stay true to this form and be an antique show whether it's repurposing or you know a headboard whatever mm -hmm. maybe we we use the 48 years celebrating our 49th year and we're reaching out to the vendors that are in Texas and that are in Florida and that are in California and saying, you know, here's a listing of the vendors that have had successful shows and list all of the states that they've come through and, you know, do, do something like that so that we're hitting different areas. Who do we want to market it to? And if the issue is that we don't have enough vendors because the vendors are bringing in the people, then all of a sudden we're point. I think we can promote national vendors coming here because they do it. They are. They're here, <laughs> yeah. We have national yeah. people buying too. Oh, absolutely. So I mean, I get that. messages. We don't use that in our promotions only. Right. At one time we said it was the sixth, and maybe still it's the sixth largest. I write, show I mean, I write that in almost, I mean, like vendors coming, I write where they're coming from. Like, yeah. like our, like our fabric lady, she comes all the way from Florida, but she goes, travels the world mm -hmm. pulling fabrics from, she buys in markets all over the world. I put that in everything. I mean, and people follow her. They literally, I have messages. Is Margaret coming? Yes. <laughs> like that is a big deal to people. So I, I'm 100% on board. I hear what Lori's saying. I hear what Dana's saying. I hear also, I, I do, I'm hearing what the vendors are saying. They want it to be an original. They want it to stay an antique show. They don't want our, our gold rush weekend to turn into something like our neighbors to the north or, you know, some of what, what transpires when you try to grow a show and it kind of grows into this big massive thing. But something to consider if we want to try to keep it you know it, it's antiques okay antiques olden days what can we can we try to market or grow using that by adding entertainment th things that are similar to maybe things that you see at the renaissance festival things that are are more traditional in nature that would be more suitable to fit in with an antique show versus uh, rides or a carnival or um, um, you know there are there's certain kinds of music there's like live band kind of music that's not your head banging mosh pit kind of thing that these vendors are probably very fearful of um, I think if we're careful in our thought process we probably could still grow the show but in a, a tactful way that's respectful to the vendors and keeps them around and try to, to keep their the gold rush, you know, ideals, the way they like them. So we're sort of catering to them, but we're also growing or trying to find a way to grow. I don't know. It's, it's just a thought. It is. And it's, I've had so many talks and I've had talks with vendors. I've, I've had like thoughts, like, could we move this to Orinoco Park and have it be more like Trader's Market Elko, where you could charge, where you have an entry fee and then you just, you charge people to come in and there's one way in and one way out for the, you know, but then I've talked to a few vendors and they're like, that would be kind of a nightmare getting in there and out. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. You know, so there's like, but we do, I think we have the right team right now to really think outside the box and like, and figure this out over the next few years. I think we have a really good group. Or do a West Side Street dance on that Saturday night and yes. go over to the park behind Tilly's. Yes. And well, we tried to do that, but they wouldn't remember. Well, not with don't do it at Tilly's, do it at the Memorial park. park. At the park, yeah. At Memorial Park and and have the the field and have the lion's tent over there for an evening selling beer and plenty Marys and music and <clears throat> I mean, yeah, you could I mean, take it outside there. of this area, but still give people the way the thing, you know, something to do, because I know people want to continue being out and about that and they don't want to go far. So if it's, you know, happy hour starts at four and it's over at or, or whatever it's called Memorial yeah. Park. Yeah. Um, so then the issue becomes, do we want this to be a 
classic rock and roll band? Do we want it to be a country western band? Oh, yeah. Do we want to be a I'll polka be band? above. I'll <laughs> I'll show up for polka. <laughs> you be a polka. I'm just saying. No, I'm saying I love polka. I mean, I think I'm just throwing out ideas. But no, you, you yeah, know, you could absolutely right. do something on yeah, the west side. Get get people out of this area because the vendors want people. That was the issue about having a dance or uh, after hours is that it's not their goods aren't safe then. And I agree that's not a, the best place to have it. Yeah. So, I mean, that was a whole or like, have it at the camp, have it at or an old park, have it at the where we do the fireworks and have yeah. have a, be a separate know, event. Separate I'll event. speak from my own personal experience. When you're sitting out there for two days behind a table selling stuff and setting it out, covering it up. Mm-hmm. By five o'clock, you're you're done. You don't want to yeah, participate yeah. in anything else. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And that's actually that's my own yeah. yeah. Observation. No, that's and that's that is exactly the feedback we got. Yeah. Like actually, that's why we shortened the hours is because of that. Yeah. Um. Feed. We got almost almost a lot of. I mean, most of the feedback was that, that they wanted a shorter show, but that that this would be then for the city. And maybe it wouldn't even be Gold Rush Weekend. I don't know. Maybe we have a few different options of events we put on during this year. I mean, we talked about like a a winter one. I mean, we don't have to, we can do more. We can do more with this. We just have to really start thinking. And it's Mm -hmm. good that we're having these thoughts and discussions now and everybody can like grow that and come back after this show and and I think we can. Can I throw one other thing out there, just as long as we're on this topic, is that um, you know if we have 800 lots or we've had 800 lots for 48 years, and we're only pulling in 250 vendors, um, or 300 vendors, do we do we pull in the ropes and we tighten up the the boundary a little bit? I mean, do we need? Do we? Do we try to condense um, into a smaller area so we don't need as many garbage cans and we don't need as many this or as many that? I, I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there as a thought as well. If it is something that is going to shrink just due to enrollment, I mean, just due to vendor signups, um, is it not in our best interest to try to save money on making it size appropriate? So when I joined, they had just done that. They had really consolidated. What looks weird, and I didn't know this until I joined, is that the outliers are usually not vendors. They're not city vendors. They're not renting from us. They're renting from private. So like the, the show did a good job of consolidating and making all that work better. And they took a ton of, ton of porta potties, garbage cans, all that away. The year I think after I joined, or, or the year, yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it just doesn't look like it because we have almost it's two shows. It's people renting from the city and One then people side rent. Road and just, yeah, people mm-hmm. renting from the private but, property. But that being said, I mean, we pay Grace Lutheran money to rent. Do we need all those spots? Because mm-hmm. the pines are like their favorite. That's the problem. But the pines isn't the what pines we pay them for. Solid. So well, the pines used is there's probably a couple, probably another hundred lots in there that we're not using in the inside. We're just using right. the right of way on the outside. The, the payment is for their parking lot, and that was a favorite spot too for flat ground for trailers that pull yeah. in. For so at that time there wasn't an interest in getting rid of that parking lot, and so but there could be uh, something yeah. to that, or at least a different arrangement for the payment. Well. Well, a lot of good thoughts. <laughs> yeah, a lot of good thoughts. I, I just wanted to throw the succession planning out there. Carol asked me to do that, so it's out there and uh, some pressure in our minds going into the show. Yeah, this will be good to come so, back to after and, and really um, brainstorm this. I love it. I mean, I don't love that we're but, talking about it because Carol's leaving. But, <laughs> but, uh, but that's to answer your question. Yeah, if Carol. I've been thinking like that over in K lot, the v, VFW lot, uh, the B lot where the uh, Lions band is at. I think there's only one or two vendors up there. So she is thinking about moving them out, just take them out of the, of the open lot. So, 
Okay. Um, good discussion. Anything else you want to touch base on? Yeah. Otherwise, um, I make a motion to adjourn. Lori? Favor, so you're probably saying aye. 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 Next meeting is July 12th, and we'll uh, have a critical meeting. Make sure everybody's here. Reminders. And we'll uh, make sure that Kristen's involved, and we'll try and have more background information for all the committee members what's going to happen in July and August. Yeah, have you? All right. Lizzie. Yeah. How's your scar? You'll know I, I, uh, an hour before the P and Z meeting last week, I was at the little pool with my kid and I stubbed my toe and I looked down and I was like, that really hurt. And then I was just bleeding all over the floor and it wouldn't stop. And it was going and going. And finally, I just thought I have to go to the ER. And so... I sent Rylan a note when I was sitting there at like quarter to seven. And I was like, I that this is just not gonna make it. <laughs> like kind of just one of like, and I'm like walking through the locker room holding a naked child, <laughs> bleeding <laughs> everywhere, like, bleeding, oh, and I'm no. trying to wrap her in a towel. And there's people all trying to do that, and I'm just it is not it was not a it was eventful. And so after two hours in the ER, I. Waiting, I found out that if you wait that long, your skin is miraculous and can start to heal even within two hours. And so it was starting to like adhere back, never mind, back onto itself. It was incredible. And then I ended up getting it like my toes are now glued shut. Yeah, yeah. So, um, it was, what did you, what was it on? On the bottom of a metal door. Oh, like I caught it underneath oh. the door and the uh, door was yeah. not, like it was sealed in a different way and it just oh, like sliced no. straight through my coat. Uh, uh, it, was, it was just, it was a, uh, thank you for asking. Oh, you're welcome. I picked up a new scar too here about 10 days ago, some dermatology surgery. Oh, so. man. Yeah. <laughs> No surgery, so. Uh, all right, next meeting, we're all going to talk about our scars and battle. Will we? <laughs> all right, Tate, you can email. Yes, wait, 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 grab a couple. Everyone, take it up. I'm going to keep it said and more. Oh, wow. Is it ever did? Oh, wow. Where are they? Like, Chanel? Oh, well, cool. I brought it. Oh, yeah. Oh, neat dogs. So what did I, we have talked about this art and the thing. We've tried to. Okay, so Zumbro, you have Zumbro. And all the council yeah. members, if you want to take your stuff with you and review it before tomorrow night, that'd be great. I reviewed it online. Well, there's some new additional stuff. That's why oh, it's laying there. Yeah. Okay. That wasn't just a second. I will send him my sign up saying and then let him know. <laughs> I'll let Carolyn know that you took it so it shows the free it's story. nice that we kind of want to try out the list and see if people get on it. Then we have like a place where we can push it out, push it out. Yeah, but, then we, but then as soon as the sign of genius has come out, we're going to push that out. You know, like it's nice to have that personal spot to kind of. Yeah, I did. Because we can't shoulder tap everybody. We can at least shoulder tap them with an email. And, yeah, so the, do you have the list of people that have done it this hour? Yes, I do have a list of people that have done it before. And I have a list. Yeah, I have that, and then uh, I have like a couple things people said, and, and Carol seeing the kids outside home, all day, and having your toddler and meet people. So I've got some of those contacts starting, and so I have some of it. I don't have all of, them, but I do have the list of people who signed up before. He lives on Sanders of Land, so and he is. I don't have a little bit of that. Yeah, those usually fill up. Those people. Hey, don't forget to take. So that I have to stop. Oh yeah. Pass it out, please, wherever so you want. I've taken it for it.
The the five k is new. I don't know. Yeah, I was gonna say this one's new. Yeah. Let me grab some of these. I don't want to take too many in case other people are more productive okay. than me. I have I like okay. anywhere, so I don't. Yeah, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit two shops. I'm going to lacrosse on Wednesday. Thank you. So take a I'll see if I can hit two yeah. Yeah. shops we'll take, on the way out. Take these then. Did you take these? I have a bunch of those from last okay. time, and then I have a couple of these too. Yeah, and I'm sending I off have... some tomorrow, and I drop some off. I'm just these. trying to. Yeah. Yeah, any stores, any <laughs> stuff you have, people you know back home so, or wherever. Okay, yes. good. the bully doggy that you have. Oh, I can't remember his name. Dragon. Dragon. I will let you know if I can get Dragon Jr. If I do, I'll come pick up first. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Boy, the dad is Dragon. The boy oh, is Cobalt. Cobalt. Okay. So there's a, I swear to God, who is there? there. But he looks like um, Andrew Casey's, and you have their logo right okay, you know the I do. And um, you know, you know, I sent them a request today because I was like, oh, I think I said Casey's. And then I freaking looked at the sheet. And, like, and then they sent me back saying, it's ridiculous because you we've already contributed to this. So I'm like, okay, they're con planning to do it then. I just didn't oh, know if you had seen anything yet. You haven't seen anything, anything, but they must be, yeah, they must be on it. or Because I got that back like right away. So they knew. Oh yeah, because you have to put in your um, like organization number. Yeah. yeah, so they probably just have yeah. a way to check that. Yeah, so that was good though. I was like, oh okay, I guess yeah. we can count on that. Um, yeah, I just am worried about the, you guys. I hate. I'm glad we do the five k, but I freaking hate it. I want to get rid of it for me. I don't want to do it. Somebody needs to do it. <laughs> I hate organizing the five k. I don't know why. It's not hard. Yeah. I just don't like doing it because it's not like what I like. I don't yeah. like running. <laughs> I hate running. <laughs> and so I don't I know. Run I don't know yeah. runners and I don't know. I don't know any of this. So oh, funny. there were so many people that signed up even in 2019 that was the last I on the morning of, which is. I know. And I know that that's what will happen. Yeah, that makes it hard.